Hi everybody, this is Emma from HashiCorp. It looks like people are st still joining the webinar, so we'll start in about two minutes time. Thank you. Okay, let's get started. So hi everyone, and thank you for joining us today for a webinar hosted by HashiCorp and Red Hat. Today we'll be discussing how you can use Vault to secure Red Hat's Ansible Tower and showcasing how the two tools can be used together. I'd like you to introduce you to our presenters today, Nicholas Ehrman, Senior Solutions Engineer at HashiCorp, and David Clavel, Senior Cloud Solutions Architect at Red Hat. And they'll talk you through how the tools can be used together via a presentation and a demo at the end. We'll then spend the last 10 minutes of the webinar dedicated to live Q&A. This webinar is recorded and the recording will be made available after post-processing, usually within a day or two, and I'll email it out to all of you after the webinar in a couple of days. So feel free to put questions in the questions box and we'll answer them at the Q&A. With that, we'll go ahead and get started. Off to you, Nicola. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Emma. Good morning, everyone, or good evening, depending where you are. Uh, my name is Nicola Sermon and I'm... I, I am with David Clovel today, and we are going to go to a quick introduction of ourselves. But today, the main subject here is how we can work together in terms of you know, configuration management tools and secret management to have the best of both worlds and to have you know, maximum security uh, when you want to automate your infrastructure. So uh, let's, let's start first with a quick introduction on who we are, David. Please. Hi. Yeah, I'm David. I, I work with Red Hat France, where I've been for like two years now. And I do mostly Ansible, like exclusively and mostly Ansible stuff. And I know Nicolai quite well because he was at Red Hat and we worked together before. So. Yeah, thank you, David. So, yes, my name is Nicolas Sermon. I'm a senior solution engineer at HashiCorp since almost one year now. Uh, I, as David said, I come from Red Hat, so we, uh, you know, I, we have both of us. We have very good understanding of automation, cloud, and you know everything as code inside your uh, infrastructure, or even you know beyond that. So, just to go through uh, very quickly on the agenda, so we are. It will be, uh, you know, uh, cut into three pieces. The first one will be uh, a quick presentation of HashiCorp Vault, the OSS version, and what, what is the value of Vault Enterprise. And then we're going to go through Ansible Tower and what is Ansible. So uh, the main thing, Ansible Core and Ansible uh, Tower, the enterprise version. And we're going to go through, uh, I think a very good demo where we're going to use Vault SSH EA uh, to uh, secure the connection between uh, Ansible Tower and the managed nodes. And we're going to also use um, the static secret and dynamic secret of Vault to deploy and configure uh, a cool store application based on Java and uh, that used also um, MSSQL on Linux as a backend, and everything will be automated by Terraform, uh, Ansible Tower, and Vault. So, what is Vault, and why we use Vault? The main thing here, 
is to avoid, in fact, the secret sprawl, the fact that every secret that you have inside a company can be compromised just because, you know, we don't pay attention on some secrets. For instance, you you can put your password on a post-it in front of the screen, or most of the time, a developer's, it, it could happen, or even a, a, a DevOps guy, uh, hard-coded uh, secret variables inside their codes and push that to their Git repos, and the Git repos is not very secure uh, in a, from an Airbox perspective, and you put, you know, kind of very sensitive secrets inside, inside everywhere, inside repos, on the internet, or everywhere. And because you cannot trust anything now, because you have that, you know, that everything as a services or everything as code inside your infrastructure, you need to take care of that now. And that's why, in fact, Vault is mainly used to provide a very simplified way and centralized way of uh, managing all kinds of secrets and sensitive data that you can have inside your enterprise, inside your application, inside your infrastructure. And the main thing also here is that we use everything based on API. And that's gonna um, go to the next slide about what is Vault. The, the main goal of Vault is to provide a unique workflow uh, independent on any cloud or any authentication method that you want to use. The main workflow is you provide an authentication, an identity. Vault will verify that identity uh, to, through, uh, uh, through an identity authority and then give you authorization and secret, um, secret access. So that's the main workflow and that's the main goal, that's the main goal of Vault is to provide that specific workflow whatever type of secret or whatever type of, of authentication that you want to use, okay? So that's the main goal. But it can do a lot more regarding that. In Vault, you can store pretty much everything. Everything related or identified as a sensitive data. Everything that you want to protect or that you want to be, you know, uh, that you want to be secure, should be stored in Vault, and you can you can do that in a central manner inside Vault. You can also, uh, of course, with Vault, you can also enhance the secret and the secret management and the secret security because of Vault uh, works with something that we call TTL for access. So the access provided by Vault is attached to a TTL, so the token or the access that you have, the identity that you use will be only available in Vault for a certain amount of time. And we have exactly the same thing for secrets where you can uh, you can leverage, in fact, the lease and revoke systems that you have in Vault to, uh, you know, provide kind of, not kind of, but, you know, provide dynamic secrets instead of static secrets uh, into Vault. Of course, because of that and because of the workflow and the authorization aspect of Vault and the fact that you can declare a policy inside Vault to give access to specific secrets, you can manage who can access or which application can access to what inside Vault and everything is uh, audited and can be sent and must be sent through, um, you know, um, data lake, for instance, uh, where you can put all the audited, audited logs uh, on a specific system to do kind of predictive uh, action on the system and to see if you have something wrong uh, that is happening on, on your system, uh, like someone is trying or an application uh, that been hacked is trying to access to Vault with the wrong token, you can do that and you can see that. Of course, it can be deployed on any platform. And as I said, the workflow works for any type of cloud or any type of authentication and secrets. How it works, uh, really, it works in a, you have three aspects to do that. First, you have a client. A client could be you, could be me, could be a human, or it could be a machine. A machine based on a cloud or a containers or uh, an application, Java application, Spring Boot, Python, whatever. 
the thing here is the client is the thing that needs to access to secrets. But to do that, it has to uh, it's it has to authenticate through Vault. And to do that, you configure an authentication method that you have on your left side of the screen. So, for instance, you configure LDAP for user. You configure uh, Okta or you configure Radius. You configure a GitHub account, or you want to use token, or you want to use AWS IAM account, or Kubernetes uh, token, and and all that stuff. You can use that as a identity authority to validate the identity provided by the client. As soon as the client uh, and Vault validates the identity through the different uh, identity provider, you're going to have attached to uh, a token, you're going to have attached a policy to um, give you uh, authorization that you have attached to the role that you use to connect to Vault. And that specific authorization gives you access to specific paths inside Vault, and paths is a kind of secret and where you can you know, uh, connect to a static secret engine to go through a, a static, uh, static username or static password. And that's, that's, we, that's what we are gonna demonstrate in our, in our demos, where we're gonna use, in fact, uh, Ansible Tower and a Vault Lookup plugin to connect to Vault and retrieve static username and password to uh, integrate uh, the rel uh, vms inside uh, rh um, inside uh, you know red hat subscription uh, we're going to do that are we going to do also uh, some things that we call sshea to uh, automate the connection uh, the secure connection to every host managed by ansible uh, through a sign through a sign public key um, generated by Vault. So you can, that's how it works. You have static and you have dynamic secret accessed by a client, which is, um, who are, sorry, uh, authenticated by an external uh, identity and validated by Vault. With Vault, you can do multiple use cases. The first one could be, for instance, the PKI as a services. So we have a very good webinar for uh, for my friend uh, Sebastian Brun on that, uh, where he explained, or even a, a blog, where he explained what you can do and what you can achieve with Vault as a as an intermediate uh, certification authority to automate the process of certificate generation for application. As soon as you, as you start um, an application, the application can authenticate through Vault. Uh, via a specific authentication method and can access and ask for specific certificates and can do that, you know, can even renew the certificate automatically directly inside the code instead of doing it manually. You can also use Vault to manage a cloud key. For instance, uh, you have a support, you have um, like L2 or L3, they need to have access to different cloud a platform because they have to do that for their day-to-day -day work. Uh, but you don't want to create a static uh, secret, a static user, an IAM user, because you never know when you have to remove it or when you have to revoke it. So you can use Vault uh, to create a dynamically access for any cloud that you want. And it could be, of course, uh, attached to a lease, and the lease could be for 30 minutes or one hour. I can give access to a cloud, and after that, the secret is automatically revoked. That's exactly the same process for the dynamic database secrets, and that's something that we are going to demonstrate in our demos, where we're going to use, in fact, Ansible to configure Vault through the API, and asking uh, for the application um, a specific, uh, not, a, not a specific, but a dynamic database access to the SQL database hosted on Linux to configure as a Java application and to start the application with the right secrets and dynamic secrets and to give access to the backend. And we will demonstrate that uh, in the demos. Same thing for SSHEA. SSHEA is mainly used, in fact, because it's too hard to maintain a key and the rotation of the key, SSH key for like 
you know, even hundred of nodes, it's not easy because you have to create every time a new key uh, for every new user that you want to give access to your nodes. And every time you do that, you have to put the new key, a public key to authorize it key. And it's not sustainable at, at scale. So that's why we demonstrate the use of SSHDA where we're gonna use, sorry, as a bolt to sign uh, the public key of, uh, of a key used uh, by Ansible Tower. And the signed key, the signed public key will be uh, attached to a lease for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, the certificate certificates will be revoked and the access is not possible anymore. You have to renew, you have to ask again to uh, certify uh, your key with, uh, with the same process, the same workflow. We can do also a lot more of different use cases with Vault, but I cannot you know, explain all the, all the use cases that we can do. But I also did a, a webinar last week where you can see the integration for a securization in containers environment, for instance, uh, with uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift, or even dynamic stuff already that I, I explained. So everything here is managed by some things that we call Vault OSS, because that's uh, uh, you know that's the way we, we are doing things at HashiCorp. Every main features are available are available sorry on OSS um, on OSS binaries. But we also have enterprise features, and that's why I'm moving to that slide to explain very very briefly what are the key features. With Vault OSS, you can manage your secrets. You can manage pretty much everything. The thing is that you don't have the like key features. For instance, disaster recovery replication. So with uh, enterprise, you have the possibility to create two clusters one primary and one uh, secondary, where you can very easily replicate uh, from, uh, from an active passive perspective, uh, everything that you have on the primary to a secondary. When, this, when the primary goes down for any reason, you can promote the secondary, it becomes a primary, it, you still have access to every secret and even the applications that were already uh, authenticate through vaults are still authenticated. You don't have to, you know, re-authenticate through vault to do that. You also have something that is pretty cool is something that we call namespaces. So for instance, where, when you want to create a different, uh, you know, uh, isolated vaults on the OSS part, you have to create uh, as many cluster as you need regarding uh, the, the multi-tenant that you want to have. In enterprise, you just have to use namespaces where you can have, you know, only one vault cluster where inside you can, you know, slice your vault cluster into different, uh, into many vault clusters that you need inside the same vault and uh, give access like, you know, uh, for instance, a specific BU can be admin of a specific namespaces where the secret team manage a vault clusters and take care of the world, uh, integration and everything. Uh, of course, we can also help any companies to be compliant with some data protection and regulation with uh, some things that we call mon filters and control groups um, to give uh, some kind of approval workflow to give access to specific secrets. Uh, we can uh, also provide a governance and compliance with Sentinels, a tool that we use for every every uh, AshiCorp solution, where you can ask code, declare your policy, and for uh, to be compliant with your business rules or whatever rules that you want to have inside inside Vault, and you can use that, use it at code and put in Vault to ensure you are strictly compliant with what you need. Uh, we can also integrate with HSM for everything related to uh, compliance, uh, like for banking uh, environment and all that stuff. And we can also provide some things that we call multi-DC replication, where instead of you know having instead of having uh, you know uh, sorry for the noise, um, instead of having um, multiple cluster, um, you know. 
managed by by their own you can have one primary cluster uh, and different performance replica in different region managing everything from the primary site but give access to the secret locally to the app on different regions so that's why we, we still have that so we you know you it's pretty uh you know easy to understand the value of enterprise versus the OSS version regarding uh the, the specific key features but it's it's done for vault let's move on to ansible so david the floor is yours hi uh, yeah so um uh, what is ansible anyways so let's let's move on to the next and first slide so um ansible now it started as a configuration management tool usually people in the enterprise know it quite well but it moved to be something much bigger than that because there's a lot of Ansible modules that are able to manage a lot of stuff from network to Windows machines to security systems, firewalls and so forth. So the scope of what you can address and actually automate with Ansible is very broad. And while it started as a configuration management system, it can also do a bunch of other things. You can integrate to continuous delivery system. You can do continuous delivery system Sorry, you can do CI/CD with it. You can also use it as an orchestrator to call out to other entities and so forth. So Ansible now is really like a holistic tool to automate all of your enterprise stuff. Um, let's have a look at how Ansible works. So I'm not going to go too deep, but if you can put on the next slide, Nico, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, so how does Ansible work? Well, um, the core um, the core part of Ansible is called Playbook. It's a YAML file that's made of a series of tasks. And those tasks, they describe the state that you want to reach for the systems that you're going to configure and automate. And these tasks, they are calling out to modules. Modules are like the batteries included with Ansible. And uh, they are essentially the abstraction layer between something that's difficult that you want to do, like configure uh, Cisco API device, sorry, Cisco ACI devices. And the way, the simple way that you're going to describe this as arguments in a YAML playbook file. So now you have these Ansible playbooks, they're made of tasks, they're calling out to modules, and they apply on a range of hosts or nodes or network devices or in public clouds or whatever that has an API that you want to automate. And those nodes are described in what we call an inventory. And um, in the demo that we're gonna, gonna do, the inventory is gonna be a dynamic inventory based on AWS and using tags, like the tags that you apply to AWS resources to filter out and decide where we're gonna do what. All of this is done um, in over SSH mostly. In our case, it's going to be SSH CA and agentless also, which was one of the key reasons Ansible got so popular to begin with because it's very simple to set up. Uh, if you can put on the next slide. So besides Ansible, we have something called Ansible Tower. And that's the enterprise framework to run Ansible, essentially. It comes with a bunch of features, including a REST API and a, a GUI. Um, the GUI is just a front end to the REST API. Everything is a full stack Python application. You can do everything with the API. Uh, it comes with role-based access control, meaning you can um, um, hook it up to your uh, LDAP or your AD, and then you can uh, Inherit um, roles and permissions to the objects that we're going to define. So essentially, the credentials and the playbooks and the inventories. If you want to put up the next slide, please. Above um, Ansible Tower, we have something called the Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform, and um, that is um, that is uh, a broader offering that comes with a bunch of other features, including uh, the ability to manage contents through something we call the Automation Hub. Um, yeah, 
let's, let's go to the next slide. Coming with Ansible Tower, we also have a native um, interface to actually Vault. So this is what we're going to demo today. There's a bunch of um, different ways you can do this. First of all, we're going to have a native credential definition for SSH CA. This means that when you are managing nodes through SSH, you're going to use Vault's SSH CA signing mechanism in order to obtain a way to connect to the nodes you manage. This means that it's going to be centralized by Ashiko Vault, and also it's going to have a life um, lifetime. Like the, the sign key will have a uh, end of life, if you will, could be 30 minutes by default. So that's one way that's very powerful to connect to managed nodes because, first of all, um, it's centralized in uh, Vault, it has a lifetime. You're not going to be uh, able to uh, compromise that very easily, and it's all agent vessel, so it's uh, uh, the vault itself is aging this. Then we're going to have a static secret lookup. Um, this is just looking up a secret that's defined in vault and then I'm going to con consume in my playbook and that's also going to be done at the tower level. And the third level of integration we're going to show is a deeper dynamic secret use case where we're going to use vault from Ansible inside playbook to configure the MS SQL database of the EAP application that I'm going to deploy so that the database has the admin password and admin user and completely controlled by Vault. And how we're going to use that to configure EAP. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, so let's move on to the demo part. So now I'm going to start very briefly to explain what we did in terms of, you know, platform, how we, how, uh, we deployed it and all that stuff. So as you can see here, and you know, we it's pretty funny to see the both tools together, Terraform and Ansible. So we use Terraform uh, to build, in fact, the base, uh, the base of the infrastructure on AWS. So we create pretty much everything: AWS root root uh, at VPC uh, certificates, uh, root uh, 53 LB, and all that stuff. And we use also uh ansible to conf to deploy and configure a uh, tower so here what we have just to show you here uh we have uh so five vms yes five vms a bastion or jump host which is uh accessible from outside world uh, that's where we are gonna use you know ssh to connect to other machine uh from just an administration perspective we have a board servers we have ansible tower and we have two machines, a uh, mach uh, front end and a back end. The front end is used, uh, gonna use, sorry, GBoss EAP, and the back end are gonna use SQL servers on Linux. So, how do we deploy that? As I can show you here, we have the code, and I think we're gonna share the GitHub repos uh, in, in um, after the webinars. Where here we have access, uh, we have the code which deployed everything. So we have a tons of different modules, even as modules to deploy uh, Ansible Tower with Ansible. And the thing is here, we deployed also, as I said, a vault and a tower. So first things first, I started to uh, deploy the vault servers and I created and I configure automatically uh, through code, the configuration of SSHCA, which is used here to sign the client key. So we can configure SSH on both way to, to uh, validate the host or validate the client. So here, to, to, for the sake of simplicity, we used as a client signer and we configure it with a specific role called RH Forum uh, with, with a date of this year um, and a value, a TTL, a default TTL of 30 minutes. So every 30 minutes, my certificates, uh, my signed key, sorry, is uh, will be revoked by Vault, and I have to re-authenticate and re, uh, re sign again a new key if I want to gain again access to different uh, to different nodes. So why we did that? It's because, as uh, David said, in the version 3.5 of Tower they put a native integration of Vault, of Ashikov Vault uh, in, um, in Tower. 
So how do we use it? Let me sign in. Here, just to show you, uh, let, I have to do a thing first. I have to renew my inventory because just to be clear, we destroy and recreate a demo every, for every you know, 30 or 45 minutes to, to do some tests. So here, what I did uh, with David, we created uh, some things that we call a credential. And the credential here is a credential type called EshiCorp Vault Signed SSH. So you have different credential type inside Vault, native, uh, inside Tower natively, or you can even create uh, a custom one if, if needed. But here, what we're gonna use, we're gonna configure the server URL of Vault here, and we're gonna put a token. The token here that we use is only has only access because it's something that I said earlier is attached to a specific policy, and that policy gives only access to that specific secret engine and to that specific pass. So it's only allowed to sign public unsigned public key through Vault on this specific role. Okay, so we did that here. And here we can, uh, and David gonna talk about that later, I think, because it's something also that you need to secure. You can give uh, and use the airbag model inside uh, Ansible Tower to give specific access uh, to that specific credential. So the first thing here is we create a token and, and a, a credential to give access to a SSHCA uh, secret engine. The next thing here, is to create, as you should do uh, with, uh, with Ansible Tower, you create a, ma a machine credential. What is a machine credential type? It's something that you're going to use to connect to a managed nodes. So here, in our case, a Linux VMs, a Rail VMs. And the things that you're going to configure, you're still going to use your username. You're still going to use a private key. But here, what we're gonna use is a signed SSH certificate, which will be dynamically uh, generated by Vault every time you run as uh, a job template in Ansible Tower. To do that, we select the SSH CA credentials that we created earlier, and you click on metadata. And here, what you can see, you have the SSH CA uh, attached to um, uh, your unsigned public key, sorry, with my specific user here. I specify the path to, a secret, to the secret engine. I specify the role name and I also specify the valid principle. That means the, val the users that are allowed to connect to the different machines. If I do test, it works, of course, because we did, <laughs> we did well, or, uh, we did, um, we did our, our test before. And what's next? Just to show you it works, I'm gonna go through the inventory. So the dynamic inventory uh, based on AWS uh, EC2 uh, plugin. So here I'm gonna go through groups. I'm gonna go to uh, tag names EAP to oh, here. And here I have access to my host, that's the host. And I run uh, some things that we call uh, add up command in, in Tower. So here I'm gonna go to uh, launch a module called setup and the setup just, you know, just gonna do things on, on the, uh, the Linux machines, the remote uh, nodes and I click launch. Here I selected my machine credential which used the SSH CA uh, dynamic secrets to provide and sign the public key. I do launch and here what you can see, it works and it say it created an artifact here and it's something called SSH key, uh, key sorry, data cert. And that comes from a Vault here uh, token. So it's not the real token of Vault, of course. And here it declares that you use SSH CA and that gives you access to your managed nodes. Here, what does it mean? It means no more rotation of SSH key on, on the different nodes that you have to manage. Everything will be centralized in Vault and will use Vault to connect 
and to certify um, the public key to connect to vote. Now David gonna go through another demo where we're gonna use an application and we are gonna demonstrate you know, um, the playbook and the integration with vote inside the playbook. Yeah, so um, I have the same vote server here. Sorry, tower server, <laughs> also the same vote times. And um, in tower, the main exec execution unit is called a job template. I'm going to show you this job template that is a cool store EAP job template and that will essentially deploy a full stack application. So the VMs were previously in all the environment in AWS was provisioned with Terraform, but now we have like one VM that's tagged with the MS SQL tag and another one that has the EAP tag and we're going to deploy MS SQL on Linux, configure that. We're going to deploy JBoss EAP, configure that. And then we're going to need to connect JBoss to SQL because JBoss actually uses SQL as a backend for the application that we're going to deploy, which is sort of like web store. So um, in terms of job templates, what we have in Tower is a link. I mean, in the job template, we have a playbook. And this playbook actually comes from a Git repo. It's defined in a project. The project is called CoolStore. I'm just going to show you that because it is important to remember that everything in Ansible and Ansible Tower is um, infrastructure as code and defined in Git, right? So I'm using here a branch, which is the Ashcorp branch. I named it that way for this demo. And the stack.yaml template that I'm going to use, you can see it does something fairly simple, right? So you configure the database and then the middleware. You can skip on the load balancer part because that was previously done in Terraform here. So that's the thing we're going to execute, right? And we're going to execute this in an inventory, which is the AWS dynamic inventory. And we're going to restrict this to a bunch of tags. So the tags that we're going to use are MS SQL and EAP. There's numbers of ways to do this differently. This is easy and straightforward. Interestingly enough here, we have the credential section. The credential section here, it uses Linux thread. Well, Linux threads, um, Nicholas just showed you, is actually a full lookup in order to get uh, SSH CA certificate. And um, I just wanted to show you this one more thing. Here we can add permissions. So here we're in demo mode and when we have admin, but I could be using permissions coming from the LDAP that console tire is connected to. Um, other type of credentials we have is RHSM. So this is gonna be used to connect to the Red Hat subscription manager system, which allows a uh, Red Hat machine or RHEL machine to get you know, package from the official RHEL repo. So we need this to install the stuff. And, um, this credential is a straightforward lookup to uh, HashiCorp Vault. So if I go and look at here, I can see I'm, I'm, I'm using um, the Vault lookup. And the Vault lookup is going to look up to a secret and it's going to look for that key username. And uh, if I go for password, well, I'm going to do a Vault lookup. And that Vault lookup is going to look up for the key password. So these secrets that are like non-changing because they're defined by Red Hat for that specific use case, you could change them obviously, but in the case of these demos, those are like static uh, passwords and static credential. Well, they are stored in Vault and the entire is just going to look them up and then the playbook is going to be able to consume them. So that's one other type of secret look. Right? So I'm just going to go ahead and launch the Cool Store EAP. And then we're going to have a look, uh, uh, a look at what's going on in terms of um, MS SQL setup, right? So when I set up MS SQL, I'm going to use this uh, playbook called uh, database.yaml. And database.yaml does a bunch of stuff. It will essentially set up the MS SQL repo that I'm going to consume. It's going to install a bunch of it. And then it's going to generate an SA password. So that SA password is like the, the, the SA password that you generate at install time. And it's going to be just used in order to 
give up the, the control of this password and the control of the root, the SA user to HashiCorp Vault. And to do this, I'm using a role, which here is called HC underscore MSSQL. I'm going to show you just that. And this role does a bunch of thing, things. It checks if the secret exists. Uh, it will create the MSSQL uh, secret engine if we need it in Vault. And then it will configure the secret, this secret. And to configure the secret, you can see here, it's doing two things, right? It's gonna configure, first configure the secret and also configure a role that's gonna be used by the secret. And this role here is a Jinja template, which is uh, a SQL command that's gonna be run against that MSQL database in order to, you know, take the control of the root user and um, root password from SA and the temporary password that I generated to Vault. So this means that all access to this DB is now under Vault control. So let's have a look at this happening in the playbook. Um, and it's gonna be coming right there. So here I've been generating that temporary SA password. And here, I'm actually configuring, this is the HCM SQL role I was just talking about. And it's just gonna create and configure the role in SQL Engine and essentially give up the password control of that database to a role. But now, once this is done, this uh, and a password and uh, user, we need to use in JBoss we need to configure JBoss, specifically if you know um, Red Hat JBoss CAP, a file called standalone.xml in order to configure it to look up to its data store backend. So we need the JDBC connection to be configured with that user password that's now under vault control. So how am I gonna do that? Well, it's really easy. When I configure the um, middleware layer, at some point, I'm just going to do, hey, have a lookup, right? Go look up in the Ashcom vault. And obviously, I, have a, I know how to look, to look that up from the credential that I'm using in the template, right? So there's a vault server and a vault token. Those I can have Airbnb seen on. They're discreetly stored entire. And this is just going to look up for me the passwords that vault controls for the end of SQL database. And when I have those, I'm going to store them in variables and then put that through Jinja2 template in my HashiCorp, sorry, in my EAP configuration. It's right there. You can see here, I'm using these two values. So now they are stored and configured inside the EAP configuration, but they come from Vault, right? So what happens, this happens like um, down in the playbook configuration, sorry, in the middleware configuration part of the playbook. What happens in the end is that um, I get a fully deployed EAP application with a database backend, and it's behind this load balancer that was previously down because there was like no application. But now I got a full web app that's got deployed, so it's this uh, full store thing where I can add stuff to cart, and each time I add to cart, it comes from the MSQL. Actually, the whole catalog comes from the MSQL also. So this means that we successfully connected um, the EAP front end to the MSQL back end using this dynamically vaulted user password database secret. So this whole chain is pretty powerful, right? Because we're connecting uh, using SSHCA that has only a very limited time, time life as we want. And then the actual secrets we completely manage outside of anything there in the central vault. And we just look them up and consume them as needed. So this is why we call this, you know, maximum security automation. All right, I think I'm on time. If there's any questions. Perfect, thank you both. Um, so we'll move on to our Q&A. If anyone has any questions, please submit these in the questions, questions section on the GoToWebinar console. Uh, so let's get started with our first question that we have. Um, 
So can you utilize the credentials within HashiCorp Vault as a credential within Ansible Tower? What, 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 what you can do is look up a credential that's in Vault and then consume it in a playbook. Now, if you want to have a credential, another thing you can do is have a credential, a tower credential that's defined as a placeholder to just look up into Vault. So you have a placeholder tower credential that, that's using a lookup credential to fetch the actual value at runtime in Vault. Okay, thank you. So, uh, another question. I'm a user of Terraform. What's the best way to use Terraform and Ansible together? Any way you want. Yeah. <laughs> they all work together. <laughs> we did both. We, did, we can use Terraform. So as, as we said at the very beginning, that's why we use Terraform and Ansible to prepare this demo. So we use Terraform mainly for provisioning the infrastructure and we so we have different way of integration. We can call Ansible Tower or Ansible Tower can call Terraform. And you know, you can use it the way you want. It doesn't matter. So we just have to, you know. Depends understand. on the use case you have, really. Like if you have a use case of like super cloud and you already have uh, you know your terraforms to do that, you can call then Ansible after. This is what we've been doing here. There's a number of ways to do that depending on the use cases. Thank you. Um, another question. So someone's come in and said, do we need to be a expert in code to understand Terraform and Vault and how they work? No, because I'm the, I'm not. So <laughs> I'm the proof. I'm the valid proof that you know every you know everybody can understand it. Uh, so yeah, David, maybe will not will not be agree uh, will not agree with me, but no, yeah. I agree. I think, even in playbooks or even in Terraform, we use for both tools, we use a common language. So we use HCL for Terraform and Vault, and you used for uh, you use YAML for playbooks. So it's human readable. So as soon as you can write something like resource A needs name B, you understand the code and that's it. Okay, um, another one. So can we use the HashiCorp Vault lookup plugin in playbooks running in Tower 3.5? Yeah, this is what I just did. Yeah, 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 that's what we did. Okay, um, is Vault integration included with Ansible AWX? I don't, I don't know about that, I'm sorry. Okay. We have to look it up. Yeah, we have to look it up the release notes. Probably it is. That's fine. We can get back to you on that one. Um, how? So a question specifically around Vault. So how do you ensure the security of the Vault token? Is it only stored inside Ansible Tower? Uh, that's a good question. When you define uh, credentials in Tower, they actually store that rest in the Postgre database of Ansible Tower. So. In that specific case, we only have the ASHICorp tokens that we need to consume to look up. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, it's a minimal surface, if you will, but it's still needed. So it is stored in the Postgre database. This is an open source and encrypted at rest, and it's an open source encrypted mechanism, uh, which is called Fernet, and it's a mix of different um, encryption uh, methodologies. I mean, as it has been judged strong enough by a bunch of my clients and it has been audited fairly deeply so i would trust it yeah yeah remember just to add some some few words regarding uh what david said uh the tokens that you're going to use and you, that you are configured inside and civil tower is attached to only a specific roles that gives access to only a specific secrets so mm -hmm. if that secret is compromised you can revoke it very quickly and you know it will only give access to sign a public key for a specific role. So you know, yeah, super good. Also, you can use also the airbag systems on Vault to secure, and that that's something that you should do uh, when you want to use Vault. You have to you know configure the airbag system to minimize uh, the attack surfaces. 
Okay, we've got one last question and then we'll wrap up. So is there any webhook URL for Vault if we change any secret keys to inform Vault or do we need to do that manually? This is asking about like automation if you change keys. So in fact here we use another tools, another binaries. So we can for sure, you first you can do a kind of integration with Ansible, not regarding the webhook, but if you need to do a rotation of password, you can, you know, uh, it's not a rotation of password. In fact, it's a new creation of a new secret, but you can use Ansible Tower and a specific playbook to do that. But if it's not the case, and if you're doing something else, you can use some things that we call a console template or console, a console uh, env to do that. It will connect to Vault. So you, you don't have a webhook, but console template will manage, in fact, the uh, the renew of the secrets and regarding if we are creating or if we are uh, updating something in the kd store because that's the main use case i think uh we don't have a webhook yet a notify platform to say we've changed something but we are working on it just to to move back on that on the example that we just had if you re-execute the playbook it will generate like in the setup we have now, because we chose to, it will generate a new user with a new password and reconfigure both MS SQL and the EAP backend. So like if you want to change that MS SQL user password in EAP backend configuration, it's just a matter of rerunning the same template. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is, you know, another good thing. So you could you could schedule it to just change as much as you want. Mm -hmm. And remember that that vault will automatically revoke the secrets after uh, the lease uh, time. Okay, thanks guys. And that's all we've got time for today. Um, so I hope everyone has enjoyed today's webinar and has a better understanding of how Ansible and Vault can work together. Finally, as we mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, this webinar was recorded and we will make the recording and slides available within the next day or two. We'll set, also send an email to everyone who registered with the recording link. Have a great day. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye.